Hello and welcome to this week's Missionary Roundtable. I am Ali Hazrati. I am the MTW West Coast Admin Assistant. And this is our Assistant Director, Anthony Ingler. Say what's, what's up, going man? on, y'all? What's going on? Welcome back. And this week we have a very special guest, Mr. Or Dr. Jen, Alex Jen. <laughs> Hello, hello. Good to see everybody here. Sunny Southern California. Left and coast. Coast. <laughs> West coast. West Coast, West Coast, West Coast. And <laughs> yeah, yay, there we go. And we also know that this is our first ever Korean American moderator of the PCA. Hello. So we have PCA royalty on the line with us today. I feel special. It's good to be here. Yes. Thank talking you. about missions, Great Commission, what better? Yep. What better topic, friends? So, yeah, uh, we appreciate you, you know, hopping on with us, Dr. John. And, you know, we really just want to talk today about how do we support our missionaries? You know, um, not just within this time of uh, COVID-19, but just overall, what are, what are your thoughts about um, supporting missionaries? But before we get there, I let, let that percolate be, you know, before we get there, can you let us know a little bit about, you know, who you are, uh, your role with MTW, what you do as a career. Um, yeah, we would love to hear more about that. Of course. Um, thank you again for the invitation. It's great to be here. Um, my role with MTW, uh, I had a, a, a privilege, but very short opportunity to be on the field from 2010 to 2013 in the kingdom of Cambodia. That's when uh, the country director, Lloyd Kim, was there, and he had, we were at the same church, uh, same session and all that, and we sent them off to the um, uh, Philippines first in the early 2000s, and then they ended up in Cambodia, and I was able to go as a bivocational uh, layperson, as a ruling elder, and uh, family went. We have three children at the time, three young children, 2010 to 2013, uh, 2013. Um, Lifelong ministry partners who are still there, our, our national partners and our long-term serving missionaries uh, with MTW who are still there. And so, you know, fell in love with the team and what MTW was all about. Yeah. And in my time there, we hosted a lot of short-term teams, a lot of short-term teams, which was great. Uh, came back in 2013 and um, I think about two or three years later, had the privilege of serving on CMTW the oversight board uh, for the PCA uh, for MTW and I've been on it. This is COVID year so I was supposed to roll off but they gave me the uh, one year additional so I'm still serving on CMTW which is wonderful. You know somebody has to keep Lloyd in line uh, but it's been it's been a wonderful opportunity to serve in this way. Um, but I would say thinking about missions in general it's usually one of two things either you're praying about going long-term lifetime, or you're preparing in a short-term trip in the summer or some internship. Uh, the part that usually gets missed out is this idea of support and regular support um, on a sustained basis. And my short experience, uh, three years being away from my home church, reminds, reminded me and taught me what it felt like to be on the field. And how do I say this lovingly? Quickly forgotten. Yeah. Um, and the expectation, of course, is that how come you don't send a more frequent newsletter so that we know what's going on? And if you're on the field listening to this, you know, not much happens week to week, month to month. Uh, you know, you're learning the language and the culture. You're struggling uh, with loneliness and homesickness and all those. You're not getting along with teammates. Should I share this? Should I not? We had another big fight with my spouse and my kids and all these things. Should I share it? Should I not? So nothing new going on. And very quickly, ministry gets busy for folks stateside. Um, and we just kind of go on about our business. And when they come, when missionary comes back on home assignment or uh, some other need, they come back on Sunday. You know, let's get lunch together and let's have this. So that's fairly typical. I want to talk a little bit about what a long-term, more sustained, intentional uh, sending church can do. And if you have a missionary in your church that you've sent, uh, this is maybe a consideration. And so this is what happened to us 
for at least we support several missionaries in different areas, uh, Australia, Cambodia, and other places. But because I was in Cambodia, uh, perhaps this is uh, a little bit more of a deeper felt need for me. Uh, the Cambodia team invited our current pastor, Will Chang, our senior pastor, to be the pastoral associate, team associate. Maybe one of these days y'all can talk more about what a, a pastoral associate is, but this is a dedicated pastor who will commit to several years for one particular team in one particular region um, and meet their spiritual needs. So it's sort of like the pastor of all the missionaries. Yeah. And that commitment comes with a regular visitation and whatnot, uh, going to the field, if at all possible, leading the retreat. At least this is the way uh, the Cambodia team has done it. Yeah. And so Will Chang has been doing that uh, for the last several years, which is great. But here's the part that's really encouraging. There are several people in our church who have made the commitment, because it's not just the pastor, but you've got young children on the team who need some sort of uh, release as well. If nothing else, the parents need the release. So we have a couple people at our church who've made the commitment to say, I'm gonna go every year to the same place and this is my mission. Yeah. And so I will go and simply work with the children and organize games and play time and all these things to alleviate two days of a, a regular duty for parents. Yeah. Um, I go with this team, I lead the praise, um, and then a lot of, um, oh, for lack of a better word, um, Presbyterian beverage ministry, uh, is what I engage in after hours with people who are interested. Um, and that's part of what I do. I've got several other friends who are willing to commit financial resources to provide said bread beverages. Um, you know, so everyone has a, a, a role to play. And this is sort of an annual thing that we do. And um, having come back seven years ago, I've gone back every year. And I've been trying to encourage people who have ever been on a short term trip for whatever reason, uh, to consider going again um, for this specific role. So you're really helping the helpers, right? Um, and if they don't get the refreshment, they can't keep doing the work and getting that kind of mindset. So that's sort of where our church is with, with Cambodia. Um, we'd love to be able to do that with all the missionaries that we're serving. A lot of it comes down to individual care because we have friendships. Yeah. But um, th that's something that I know that the missionaries on the field have really appreciated. I love them. So, yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead, go ahead. This year, 2020 being 2020, all bets have been off. Uh, no one's gone anywhere. Uh, all trips have been canceled. So what I know what uh, Pastor Will Chang did was he recorded his sermons. They still had the retreat. Um, the Cambodia team went on their own and they had the recorded sermons. Okay. I know that Kathy, uh, Will, Kathy Chang, Will Chang's wife, also recorded some messages because she's our children's director. She recorded them for the children and they organized something for them. So it's possible. But you know, the, the upside of all that's been going on with COVID is everything has become more intentionally virtual. Mm -hmm. I've been spending more time on individual regular Zoom calls just to catch up with some of the teammates yeah. um, and having that sort of accountability and fellowship. Now, mind you, this should have been going on long ago, mm -hmm. but um, you know, we assume, well, well I'm never gonna call you if being physically present is the primary option. Now that it's not, um, the virtual fellowship is life-giving for everybody. And I hear that pockets of uh, friends in our church that are doing this with others on a regular basis. So, I mean, you just have to be intentional in that sense to say, I know they're craving fellowship. They're sitting alone in their homes, not being able to go out just like everyone else. How can we use this time creatively and intentionally? Love it. So let me ask you, um, what do you say to the person who either college student, uh, single parent, you know, not a lot of money right now, a lot of people are hurting financially. And they say, listen, Dr. John, we hear what you're saying. We want to support missionaries. We know this is glorifies God. It's good for them. It's good for me. What should be our next steps? You know, I'm hurting financially. It's not like we can go over there. I don't have much to give. What can, what are some, some first steps that people can take to start to support missionaries uh, now? Yeah, yeah. 
Well, at a minimum, if you don't know who your missionaries are, reach out to them. It's always good to have an individual conversation that's not clouded by 18 other social commitments. Yes. What I'm saying is, when do we do it? We do it when they're here in the States on their HMA, trying to meet family, fundraise, and all these other things. And you're like, oh, I'd love to spend time with you. And you might be disappointed because your time is divided by however many people are at that lunch. Uh, you don't get some personal time, but if you did it right now, it's a perfect opportunity. Yeah. Reach out, schedule a Zoom call and see what you can do. Now, my daughter, who is a sophomore in college, uh, reached out to uh, one of the missionaries and said, is there anything I can do maybe help with um, teaching English? And uh, what a great idea. So she reached out and they said, yeah, I do a regular teaching uh, thing for English as a ministry. It's an opportunity for you. We just have to put it on Zoom. Yeah. I mean, it eliminates travel and costs and the burden of missionaries having to host. They love us, but there is a burden. There's a cost to it. Now it's just a matter of scheduling it. Yeah. And, you know, in the middle of the day for them is the middle of the night for college students. I know you're up anyway. <laughs> um, so a half hour to an hour on a regular basis, perhaps once a week, once every other week, um, practicing English with them. Um, an opportunity so we can be a resource and a workforce in ways that we never thought before yeah um, it just takes the creativity on one and the other end it's um, a desire Amen. so yeah don't wait for the missionaries to reach out to you i would say send an email out schedule a zoom time get to know them and then talk and there's ways that we can serve without ever, without ever leaving the comfort of our home and if that was your biggest concern for those of us who feel like I don't want to go anywhere, but I still want to serve, I don't have any money, but I still want to serve. I think this is a perfect opportunity. Amen. Amen. Dr. John, we appreciate it. This was so good. Um, you guys have heard it. Um, you, there's so many ways that even now you can start to support missionaries. And if you don't know who your missionaries are, um, this is the perfect time to reach out to them, especially with holidays coming out and oh. uh, coming up, excuse me. It can be very lonely, very hard for uh, missionaries and their families on the field who are away from family um, during the holidays, which is a difficult time. So this is the time for you and myself to reach out to our missionaries and really be, um, to really act and behave as their family. So I have one other thought. You, Anthony, as you're saying that, I'm reminded, if you are very detail and uh, detail oriented and good at executing things, I am not, I'll confess, but some people are, you will remember the children's birthdays. Yes. And if you're forward thinking enough, you will send a card and a gift or something, because it may take a month to get there. Uh, Christmas gifts should be sent probably this month. Yeah. So that it can get there in time. So if you're thinking ahead uh, of birthdays and whatnot for the fall, uh, Thanksgiving can pass. That's okay. But Christmas is probably a good time um, to start thinking about gift, uh, gift packages that you can send end of October, beginning of November. And then, of course, in the spring, it's the um, Girl Scout cookies. That's like crack in the mission field. <laughs> so you need to... <laughs> get some buy them and ship them out uh it is it's the funniest funniest things that you start missing hey, you maybe you know, like them before but bro them tag alongs is fire send those tag alongs you know what i mean the peanut butter chocolate and send some to your boy i'll give you my address here in sacramento what up support me too no but um dr john thank you so much um ali do you want to let people know where they can find all of our information including and content including today's video Yes, absolutely. You, we have a West MTW West Coast office YouTube page where you can find this video and all of the videos we've recorded previously, as well as our website, where not only you can check out what's going on in the West Coast Hub, but you can actually see all of the mis MTW missionaries. And so that's a great way to reach out to people too, even if your church is supporting them. If there's a place that you're interested in, you can check them out by regions. Um, and it's awesome as well. And then finally, our Facebook page where this video will be posted and as well as our other weekly Bible studies and plenty of information on training. So please go check us out there at the MTW West Coast office public page. Thank you so much for joining us today. 
and we will talk to you. See you guys next week. Bye.